So, I watched Doctor Strange 2, The Multiverse of Madness, directed by Sam Raimi. I have thoughts. I think it was a good time. I really enjoyed the movie and the stylized elements brought by Sam Raimi. But in general, I think it was lackluster in the writing department and just the world building, which is kind of weird for an MCU movie. In general, I think that the characters, they were all good though. They were, there was no character that really dragged down the movie. So Chiel Gomez, she was good. She was a good newcomer. She kind of was just like thrust into the movie. And that's kind of just how the ball got rolling, which was, which was all right. I think that Elizabeth Olsen was good. She had a lot to do in this movie, and I think she pulled it off. It's just a weird way for her character to go. A little unexpected, but I like when MCU movies do things that are more unexpected, which is good to see. And again, it is a Doctor Strange movie, and sometimes it feels like Doctor Strange does take a sideline in the movie, but that's okay. Benedict, yeah, he's fine. He's Doctor Strange. We've seen him a million times. That's fine. So I think that the first 30 minutes of the movie were incredibly generic. It was a CGI fest of things that I didn't care about. I started off the movie with a really sour feeling because of those first few big fight scenes. It was a bunch of CGI that I've seen a million times and then some generic monster that they're fighting and it was really nothing special and I thought if the entire movie was gonna be like this, I was really not looking forward to it. Luckily, things kind of got twisted up a bit and Sam Raimi kind of brought more style, but in general, I think that the writing wasn't that great. And I think Sam Raimi's stylized elements were what elevated the movie. If Sam Raimi was not the director of this movie, I think this movie would have kind of sucked. Even though I'm praising kind of the second half of the movie because of these Sam Raimi-isms that he brought to the movie, it doesn't conceal the fact that the story in general still wasn't the most strong. I think some of the reveals in the end and some of the character arcs that are completed in the final climax of the movie. I think those are a little unearned as well. It's kind of just everything culminated into this one moment and then, oh, the good guys won. I think there were a few things in that final fight that I really, really did like. One of them with Doctor Strange and one of them with Elizabeth Olsen's character. I think what she had to do in the final scene was really interesting and I liked the way that went down. The wow factor of Marvel movies is what keeps people going to the movies. They know these characters so well that whenever somebody pops up on the screen, they're like, oh my gosh, it's them. It's that character. And that may or may not happen in this movie, but there's definitely like a bunch of wow moments. And some of them do hit. Some of them do feel like characters are just being crammed into the movie. I'll say this, there's a big moment in the middle of the movie that a lot of people I'm sure will talk about. I'll not, I won't say what it is, but it may p piss some people off the way that it was handled, but I kind of did like that. So that's kind of like one big wow moment. They do stick the landing often, MCU movies, with those wow moments. And I think the one in this movie felt right for a Sam Raimi movie, how it all went down. And I was kind of happy with that. I think my biggest critique of the movie is that there's not enough multiverse madness. The movie is called The Multiverse of Madness and there wasn't enough exploration of those different multiverses. I'll just say it, like they don't go to like too many different multiverses. And I was wanting to see more of the differences, more of the crazy intricacies within these multiverses, kind of like what Everything Everywhere All at Once did. I think the release of Everything Everywhere All at Once, such a good multiverse movie and like the detail that was put into that movie kind of bogged this movie down a bit because yeah, it was so detailed, so well thought out, and this one clearly did not live up to that expectation. There just there just wasn't enough multiverse madness. It was false advertising. They tricked us, which is yeah, what they're supposed to do. But in the end, Marvel needs to bring on these different directors, these more unique directors with unique voices like Taika Waititi, Sam Raimi, even Chloe Zhao for Eternals. Like I, I enjoyed that movie, and it was definitely different. I think they need to make these movies a little more different because again if it was just some if it was like the russo brothers making this movie it kind of would have sucked so i'm happy that they brought sam raimi in it he clearly was the highlight of the movie i gave this movie three and a half out of ten i don't know where i'm swaying on that i think that i might bring it down a bit 
once I think more about it, and even if I watch it again, I think I might like it a little less. I think a lot of Marvel movies do suffer from a rewatch, and I've seen a lot of them just once, so I maybe I just won't go back to a bunch of them. But in the end, I think Doctor Strange 2, The Multiverse of Madness, is definitely worth seeing. It has some good moments. I think Sam Raimi brings his A game. And again, just want to mention Danny Elfman did the score for that as well, so that's cool. Sam Raimi mainstay. And also another mainstay, Bruce Campbell, with a cameo in there, so that's really cool. But yeah, that's all I really want to say about Doctor Strange.